Hello and welcome to the Deep Rising FX introductory training. In this series of videos, we're going to be looking at the basics of using Deep Rising FX. And we're going to start off with the fluid simulations. And we're going to look at SPH specifically. Uh, if you don't know what SPH is, it stands for Smooth Particle Hydrodynamics. It's a way to simulate fluids. There's a lot of different ways, but SPH is one, one of them and one of the best ones at the moment. So let's get started. So SPH models fluids, models fluids using particles. Now each particle has physical attributes. Uh, for example, it's got velocity, mass, vorticity, or viscosity. Now, I'm just going to go through a few of the misconceptions about uh, SPH. When you look at it, it looks like uh, when the particles collide, it looks like a rigid, like a physics engine, but it's not. The particles are not actually colliding. It's using forces to force the particles apart, which is very different from a physics engine that uh, does collision detection and stuff like that. SPH has no concept of... Uh, Collision detection, broad phase, or stuff like that. If you, understand, if you understand that type of thing, it doesn't know what that is. It explicitly uses physics to keep the particles apart. And uh, f for example, it would use pressure, mainly pressure and density, to keep things apart. And that's very important to keep in mind, okay? So it's not, uh, it's not uh, if you look at the bullet, bullet simulation in light wave, that's a rigid system, okay? And the, other, the next misconception is that it's just another particle system. It's not. It's actually, it's, it's a way to discretize or make an infinite, an infinite uh, domain, for example, like water. If you look at water, it looks like a continuous material. But we know chemistry, it's made up of atoms, but to the human eye, it's like continuous. But it's infinite, so we can't really represent that in a computer. So what SPH does, it breaks it down into particles. And each particle represents a point in the continuum, for example. And it uses physics or physical equations like the Navier-Stokes equations, if, you, if you've ever heard of them, to create fluid-like effects. Okay? And the last misconception about it is that it's inferior to other methods, mainly the flip simulation. Technically... In the past it was, but a lot of research has caught up now and the techniques are very much the same. In fact, what FLIP does is takes um, its point of view, for example, I won't go into the details, and adds particles to it. So it, it actually uses particles to represent its fluids, but uh, it's not natural to FLIP, of course. But for uh, smooth particle hydrodynamics, it's natural. Okay, so and some of the advantages of uh, smooth particle hydrodynamics, of course, is there's no boundaries. If you've used other simulations, you need to put a box in the scene, and then you need to, and then you'd simulate your stuff in the box. SPH has no concept of this. You just start the simulation, you point your emitter and shoot, and it'll go. Of course, nowadays you've got adaptive domains for stuff like that, but it's still using a domain. It's just adapt it's just growing the domain as your simulation grows. And of course, the bigger the simulation grows in those other simulations, the longer it will take. But for smooth particle hydrodynamics, the only calculation cost you get is according to the fluid surface layer, for example. Okay. Uh, secondly, it's highly parallel and it conserves energy. So another problem with other simulation methods is that they lose energy very quickly. So if, for example, if you simulate something like a dam break where you have a body of water that just collapses, you see that the energy, when it's forming the waves, just disappears really quickly. Uh, SPH doesn't have this problem. It conserves energy really well, which is really good from an artistic point of view. You don't have to do tricks like adding extra forces on it. It's just going to give you what you want to begin with. Okay? And the last most important thing against the collision thing is, for example, in this illustration, we've got three little particles. So these two particles have already technically will not interpenet will not penetrate. So in a classic particle system, like light wave particle system, if you don't have soft collisions, they will the particles will hit into each other, for example, and they'll just phase through each other. They don't care about uh, the proximity to each other. But in SPH, uh, they do not. They they're not allowed to uh, penetrate each other. And that's because of density and pressure forces. So, okay. 
Yes, so yeah, those are the, that's pretty much the basics. That's all you need to know about SPH and to get started. It's a particle system. It's got physical attributes and it's based on physics. Those are the most important things when using it and when looking at it. So let's get, I'll move on to the next session and let's, let's get started with that.